Welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the Thermaltake Armor A30 small form factor case. Well, this is a great looking box. It has all kinds of features and specifications about the product all around the box. This is important, of course, if you are picking it up in store. If you are not, well, it's not so much of a concern. And you've got a nice handle here also at the top, which is great. Again, if you're picking this up in store, you can just carry it out of the store with the handle. Now let me open it up and see what's inside. Styrofoam here, and the case is in a plastic bag. Just flip this over. Remove the styrofoam. Well, so far this looks like a very sweet small form factor case. Oh, and here's the user's manual. They have protective plastic here on the outside of the left window and it looks like they have protective plastic on the inside as well. That's good. Another window on the right side and this one same thing, protective plastic on the outside and on the inside. And I pulled this bag out of the inside of the case which has a number of cable ties on it. Looks like some kind of clips here. Um, also a speaker and lots of screws including thumb screws. Now this is a small form factor case and they are fantastic for anyone who wants a case that is fairly compact and easily transportable like for example if you're looking for a case for a LAN party. At the top of the case there's ventilation, also mesh and a huge 230 millimeter blue LED exhaust fan. Also you can see this pattern right here. A place to put a few things here on the top as well. The top panel can be completely removed. This is great for easy access to the inside of the case. All you need to do is remove three thumb screws at the back top of the case, push and just lift it right up. This case consists of lots of modular parts, one at the front, there's one at the back, and there's another drive cage down below this one. But this one is the drive cage for two two and a half inch drives, which can be installed here at the top. Another one here, external three and a half inch drive, uh, can be installed uh, vertically. Um, also, the two external five and a quarter inch drives get installed right here. Now at the back, this one is not so easy to remove. You've got six screws, three on either side, and a few more thumb screws here at the back. And this is where a standard ATX power supply gets installed. Mesh, mesh, and more mesh. <laughs> We've got mesh on a lot of parts of this case. That's okay. I like mesh. It kind of looks cool. Also uh, adds lots of ventilation. Here at the front, there's two external five and a quarter inch drive bays, one external three and a half inch drive bay. They include two USB ports. One is a USB two port and the other one is a USB three port. That is fantastic that they include a USB three port. By the way, if you're looking for a new case today, you really should get one that has at least one USB three port. And they also include an eSATA or external serial ATA port. Uh, here is the Thermaltake logo. Not a lot of branding on this case except for this. That's nice. Uh, power buttons right here. And here's the reset button. And just below here, you can't see it, but just inside of this mesh is the power LED as well as the hard drive activity LED. Windows are always sweet. And this case has two of them, one on the left side panel. And I like the design that they have on the window. 
Here's extra ventilation and the same on the right side. At the back of the case is where a standard ATX power supply gets installed. Here's extra ventilation and a slot to route cables through. They include four ventilated expansion slots as well as two 60 millimeter exhaust fans. Now, I don't know how loud these will be, but usually small fans have a tendency to be very annoying. They usually make kind of like a loud buzzing noise, but we'll find that out in the sound test a little later on in the video review. At the bottom here is where the motherboard's IO shield plate gets installed, and as you can see, there's a barrage of thumb screws at the back for everything. You've got some back here for removing the top panel, others for removing this power supply modular piece, and also this case does have a removable motherboard tray. Six thumb screws hold the motherboard tray into place, and I have them removed, so let me now slide the removable motherboard tray out. And by the way, they have this little swing up lever here at the bottom, which will assist when you want to yank this thing out. You can take the motherboard tray out of the case, take it to a place where you have lots of space to work, install pretty much everything except for the power supply, and the drives and of course maybe some fans as well that you can install on the main case but it does give you that freedom and on this one you can see you can not only install the motherboard and everything that goes on the motherboard but you can install cards here as well so it's a very nice tiny little a motherboard tray that works extremely well it slides in and out uh, very very easily also they include one blue led intake fan which is just inside of this front bezel this is just inside of the front panel here's the two external five and a quarter inch drive bay covers also over here is the three and a half inch drive bay cover just pinch to remove these and remember there's dust filters in all of these uh, also the fan i mentioned earlier this is the 19 millimeter blue led intake fan and the hard drive cage up to two three and a half inch drives can be installed on this this is removable and they also have rubber grommets to prevent vibrations now little things like this are very nice to see they have two rubber rests here for the motherboard tray. So when you slide the motherboard tray in, it kind of goes up and rests on these. Now this might be a very small case, but you can fit video cards up to around 14 plus inches. That is approximately 360 millimeters in length. The reason why you can do this is they have designed it so there's free space right here to allow for that there are four feet and each one of these feet has a soft bottom so whatever you put this on it won't scratch the surface and it will also help cut down on vibrations now let me recap there are four fans in total the one at the front is a 90 millimeter blue intake fan the one at the top is a 230 millimeter blue LED exhaust fan and there are two small 60 millimeter exhaust fans at the back. So now let's have a listen. Now, most everyone out there would probably go for a mid-sized tower case because mid-sized tower cases pretty much have all the features you should be looking for in a case. They are affordable and they fit standard ATX motherboards. So why would anyone want a small form factor case? Well, if you're an enthusiast, you probably love small form factor cases. Maybe you're a gamer going to LAN parties or you want to build a home theater PC setup or maybe you just don't have a lot of space in your home or office. In that case, small form factor cases would be a perfect fit. Now this particular case has lots of excellent, excellent features, including a removable motherboard tray. But it's not aluminum. There are no fans on the left or right side panels, although they have windows and lots of ventilation. As well, the case does not have any provision for water cooling. Uh, at least I don't think it does. It didn't appear to have any kind of mounts or anything like that. You could probably 
um, you know, modded somehow to have that, but really no provision given uh, to do that, unfortunately. A lot of people, uh, gamers, sometimes like to have even small form factor cases uh, with water cooling options, but all things considered, even the overall build quality, look, design on this, all the modular components, you know, ease of installing uh, things inside of this, it's, it's really something else. It's a kick-ass product. Until next time, take care.